recording here, so we we just get it going. But um, so the the you know the format is you know we we sent some some questions in advance, and we'll probably use some of those. But we're very much into just um, just kind of going down the rabbit holes as they happen. You know, so yeah. a little bit of free flow. So uh, long form. You've done enough podcasts. You understand the the, the things that are going on, and we're just. Uh, you know, our focus has really been on behavioral science, but part of that behavioral science that we work on is how do you, how do people change? And so that's where I think you fit in really well with all of the stuff that you've been doing. So we'll probably ask you some questions as you just dig down there. I was going to ask you a question on fisking. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. Okay. <laughs> just wanted to make sure I was like, I was reading through and doing some research and I'm going, that's interesting. I want to find out more about that. So yeah um <laughs> nice cool yeah so uh but thank you we really do appreciate you you taking time to to do this this is this is pretty fun all right no, okay no, so no. um just gonna do just a quick uh, little pause here and then we'll um yeah we do all the intros and follow-up as you know post-production so we'll have all that stuff in and we'll just do a quick intro and that'll be it yeah sounds good okay ready yep cal turnbull Welcome to the Behavioral Grooves podcast. Thanks for joining us. Hello, and thank you for having me. <laughs> we are excited. Um, yeah. This is a, a treat for us as we're uh, talking with somebody who's actually going out and changing the world. And uh, that's what we like to think we're helping people do, but you're actually doing it. So uh, we're excited here. We really uh, are. Very flattering. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, we'd like to get uh, our brains limbered up a little bit with um, with a speed round. Uh, so if uh, if that's okay, we're just going to zip through a couple of uh, speed questions here. Um, okay. Monet or Michelangelo? Oh, Michelangelo. Okay. Dog or cat? Dog. Dog. Bicycle right. or unicycle? Bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> Fisking, good or bad? Depends. Oh. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll, okay. uh, oh, if I had to choose, I think you're gonna. No, well, actually, let's let's talk about that. Yeah. So I think we need to. I think uh, a little explanation for the listeners about what fisking is, and then we can talk a little bit more about why sometimes it might be good and sometimes why not. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So um, fisking is actually something very new to me in, in terms of the name. Uh, it, it was brought to my attention by a recent post in the subreddit Change My View. And we actually have a, a blog post about it just a couple of weeks ago. Um, yeah, Cal, can we, can we interrupt you? I'm sorry, we had a, uh, we had a little interruption there with, uh, with a phone call. And, and I'm sorry, can, it, it will... will oh, right. We'll edit that out. So, so, uh, so go start ahead. with what fisking is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. No, that's okay. Take two. Take two. So, fisking is something that I learned about recently, um, and it was brought to my attention uh, by a, by a post in the subreddit "Change My View," and and basically, it's a method of dissecting someone's argument and responding to it point by point. And, and it's, sl it's a slang term named after uh, a British journalist, Robert Fisk. And, and basically, it, the reason why I said it depends is because I, I believe it, it, it has its use. It's, it's, very good at, uh, it's very good for when you, you want to make sure you're not getting someone wrong. You're mm -hmm. not putting words in their mouth. And, and so you're taking a, a whole a comment or blog post or or article or something and you're responding point by point and and you're basically saying this is what i've read and this is how i'm responding however i do think as as the user uh, who wrote that blog post on changemyview.net and also their cmv post as they pointed out i think sometimes it can get a bit lost and, and you end up getting down this rabbit hole of point to point, point to point, and you're not having a conversation. You're not actually talking to each other um, on, on a human level. So yeah, their question was, should I take a, a more narrative approach, you know, um, actually talk to them? And, and, and I guess the conclusion was it depends. Yeah. And uh, it, to, to that point, I read that blog post. I thought it was fascinating. So anybody who, 
is listening to this, I, I urge you to go out and uh, look that up because it was really well done. And, and there's that emotional level of the narrative that I think disappears when you start fisking, right? Because then yeah. it becomes point by point counter argument and you're getting down into the weeds of semantics as opposed to what's the underlying components there. So Yeah, absolutely. And it kind of, you know, in, in that sense goes against the very nature of change my view, which is about conversation, etc. And and actually trying to understand and talk to people. So yeah. So how did you found Change My View? What was the catalyst for for creating it? Yeah, so I I've been asked this quite a few times, as you can imagine, and sometimes um, it's, it can be quite tricky to, to get it across. And so the kind of long form nature of this is, is, is nice because it, it's a mixture of things, really. And um, it all kind of came, came about in, in one night and, and built up into this kind of uh, just moment of wanting to find it. And I couldn't find it, so I made it. But the, the actual <laughs> motivation... Yeah, so I, I think that's probably quite common for for when things are made. Really, you try yeah. To find it. yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it was a mixture of things. So one of them was that I was preparing to go off to university. So and 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 that kind of brings about a reflective kind of uh, mood where I was thinking across my past and friends and family and and how really in in our in our own little bubble, you know, in a in a small Scottish town, we all really in the grand scheme of things think quite similarly. Mm. Um, and, and I, and with that, I was thinking I'm going off to university in, in a city and meeting new people and of different backgrounds and cultures. And I was, and so I was aware of this like kind of change that was about to happen and, and with, and, and of the conversations that might come about. Um, also I was kind of thinking there was a couple of views that were just really insignificant and, and honestly I can't remember them now but I was kind of thinking oh it would be it would be nice to maybe hear other sides of this uh, mm-hmm. where do I go for that um and also a, another element which I don't tend to talk about so much um I've kind of skirted around I guess is is uh let's put it this way my father wasn't the best at hearing other people mm. right. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we, we, we know there are there are very many people out there in the world that sometimes are really dig into their viewpoint. So, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and so all of this together kind of made me think, where do you go when you have a view that either you want changed because there are views that perhaps people don't want to have or you're interested in seeing if it can be changed? And I, and I really struggled to, th- to think where you could go if you can't do it in real life. And not everyone yeah. has, the, has the luxury to do this in real life. Um, and maybe they just don't know anybody or, or the, the people around them aren't good for it. So, and, and as I started looking into it, the typical social media just didn't, it just didn't work, I don't mm-hmm. think. So Reddit kind of came to my mind. And so that's where I went looking. But you didn't find anything, so you created it. Yes. So uh, I, I guess anyone who's familiar with Reddit will know that if you, if you want to find a subreddit, you just type it in the search bar. So reddit.com slash r slash something, um, which is easy for, for many hobbies and things, you know, interests. You, you can just type it in, kind of guess, and, and you'll probably find it. For this idea, it was a bit more complicated what it would be called. Uh, okay. I wasn't totally sure. And and my my instinct was to type in change my mind, oh. uh, which was taken, Ugh. but it was taken by one of the thousands and thousands of what we call dead subreddits. So no subscribers and no active moderators, and so I had to think of a different name, and that's when change my view came came to my mind, and I and it wasn't it wasn't there, so I made it. Uh, and and I often say to people now that in hindsight, I'm so glad that change my mind wasn't available. Yes. Um, and, and it's become actually vital to the, to the underlying philosophy that we treat these things as views, just the way we see things as opposed to our own minds and identities. Yeah. I think that's a really good uh, differentiation point there because you're really looking at this as the viewpoints that you're doing. So, you started this how many years ago and it's taken off? Um, yeah. How, so what do you attribute that uh, success to? I mean, it's, 
I'm sure you've gotten this question a ton as well. So, um, well, you know, part of it was due to the free time I had at school. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> Great. You know, I, I, I basically, the, the, when I made it, I already had my grades and my, and my uh, offers to, for uni. So I was kind of just waiting. Okay. Uh, and, and so I had a lot of free time. But I do think that it was also just this kind of obsessiveness to make it work because I really felt it was needed. So it was a mixture of those two things. Everything just aligned very well for me in, in, that, uh, in that first year of Change My View, which is probably the most important year for a subreddit because um, I, I always think of it as, as like a snowball you're rolling towards the edge of a hill. Uh, it eventually picks up and takes off by itself, but you really have to push it for a long time. And if you stop, then it will just die. Any any form of a community that you're building will just die off. So uh, after that initial period of plugging it around Reddit and and trying to um, get people to to take part, I would say the thing that's just made it grow and grow is is the recognition from other people of the benefit of this type type of space and and the severe lack of it elsewhere. Mm. And so you know past that initial phase obviously we've got a team of moderators that work very hard to, to maintain the quality but i do think that to some extent is it's out of our hands in terms of um the the attraction well elon musk has called change my view the most civil place on the web that's that's a that sounds like a pretty good endorsement yeah 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 for sure and and you know, if you read that that tweet, um, there there's an element of it that's perhaps a bit critical too, because I believe it says that um, if if only more people who actually should change their minds would use it or something like like that, and uh, yes. and yeah, that that's true. There there is an element of change. My view is I I agree with them essentially, though of course for what it is, you know, maybe there's probably more civil places that are uh, less kind of. You know they're not talking about big political issues, but for what it is, I agree. And um, but to his actual point that uh, it, perhaps it's not always used by people who who need it. Well, you know that that's that's fair. But we all we claim to be is a service for people who need it. Right. Know? Well, and I think to to the point, one of the probably values of this is that the people who are searching it out are people who are open to that component right, uh, of, of being, having a view challenged and examined in more detail, you know, as, as we all know people who aren't there, right? And so it, it's not going to work on them, even if you did offer it up to them, because they're going to be, you know, iron classed in their views. Yeah, exactly. You, you couldn't force someone to use change my view. Yeah. So what, what are the big, um, when you look at, at the overall arc of, of change my view, are there more common topics than others? And, and what are those? What are the most common people who are willing to come in and say, I'm willing to have my view changed on this? Yeah, t topics come and go. Uh, I'd okay. say that Change My View definitely reflects the kind of hot topics of the world. So at the moment, we are going through uh, a, a gun reform uh, and gun issue phase. Of course, we, we went through... Uh, just a general Donald Trump election phase for a long time in 2016. Um, and, and before that, there was no, none that really stood out to me as like phases uh, as such, but just whenever there's an event or something of some kind, uh, it tends to come up in the subreddit. It, it's, a tr it's a tricky question though to, to, uh, to answer in terms of, you know, what are people most willing to have their views changed about, et cetera. It, it's, it's just because we, we take so many views of, of, of a different nature that it's, it's a hard question to answer. Because we also, we like to put across the idea that we aren't a political subreddit um, by design. We are for any views of, of any kind. So, you know, you can talk about your opinion on, on a movie you saw or something, you know, it doesn't have to be these, these deeply political issues. Uh, but of course, you can't avoid them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I noticed there's, uh, there was one on, uh, you know, I, I'm not a fan of, of abstract art. So can you convince me that abstract art is a good thing? And, yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah. So there, yeah, there's that sounds quite tricky on the surface, doesn't it? 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Picasso or uh, Michelangelo, and there you go. So, um, so, Cal, in your experience, are there certain factors that you see are more effective in getting people to change their view? I mean, when, when you see these happening and you get the delta that comes up, are there are there things that people are doing more effectively than others? In other words, when they're responding to these questions. Yeah, I, I'd say so. And we've had a few research papers on this that kind of back it up a little bit too. So for a while, this was just on my gut feeling, but it's nice to see that it's been somewhat uh, affirmed. Um, I'd say it, it can be quite basic as just the general tone of your approach. Okay. whether you're treating the the chance to change someone's view as as a chance to try and connect with that person as opposed to uh, try and shame them you know mm -hmm. i i think a lot of people have this habit of aggression um or appealing to the crowd or whoever might be listening instead of trying to connect so it's very basic but i do see that the people who succeed the most are the, are the ones that kind of put everything else aside and just you know get down to it you know I, I try and try and pick it apart in in a dispassionate way i'd say uh but of course I, I there are times where passion can help i i it's it's kind of it's hard to generalize these things okay uh, but but also just actually asking questions as opposed to just jumping straight in with with facts and data and references and all sorts of things so something you'll you'll hear quite a lot about is the backfire effect and yep. quite often people try and use this backfire effect in a way to kind of uh sl not slander but argue against the the usefulness of change my view because they hear about this thing where well when you show someone good evidence they're more likely to double down so through that aren't you kind of fighting a losing battle well I'd say that there's a, there's a distinction to be made in in the backfire effect, and that is that put, pick, essentially copy pasting a wall of resources isn't talking to somebody, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's where I, that's that's just my opinion on why that doesn't always work is that you're you're not actually connecting to them, you're not appealing to maybe some of their nature, you're just treating them as as an object like any other person who might think the same thing, and you're throwing stuff at them. Yeah. So you, you, you said asking questions. Are, are those questions around understanding why people are holding that view or is it more around clarifying the, the pieces that they're trying to, the, the concept that, that's going on? I don't know if that's a very clear distinction. Yeah. So clarifying questions are important um, for sure. So just making sure you understand what they're saying. But the the kind of general Socratic method of, getting them to, to answer questions relating to the, to the view mm. from what I've seen can actually um, lead to a view change purely through questioning. Oh, okay. It's not something I've, I've been able to do successfully, but the ones that do it the best just purely through questioning can lead to contradictory answers that open up their eyes on their own. Yeah. And, um, and I, I, from what I've seen, this can be like a really nice way of changing someone's view because they feel part of it. They feel like they've done it themselves mm. through, through recognizing their own contradictions. What do you think is the connection between changing someone's view and changing someone's behavior? Yeah. So, Absolutely, views can lead to behaviors. So the way you see things can can affect how you treat other people or behave in the world. However, that kind of, to some extent, contradicts what we are trying to say to people, and that is that views aren't who you are. Um, so try try to detach from them, etc. Views can become who you are, of course, if you let them take over your your life. Um, and and so just, I guess my answer is views and behavior are related if you allow it to take over I, I i do see people in the subreddit who they kind of confess to having views and i don't believe they necessarily let it affect them they just happen to think that way mm. if you know what i mean yeah 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 interesting um so you're well read what uh, what are the authors or thought leaders that have influenced you the most mm. so this is, this is an interesting question because I've found myself in this 
position, um, not as someone who is particularly skilled or knowledgeable about any of these things. I, I uh, just felt like there was a, there was a severe lack of good quality conversation, etc. And I went off to uni to study civil engineering. And so now I'm kind of thinking my interests all along have been elsewhere. And so I've realized I'm good. I have to start reading a bit more and I'm currently uh, in the middle of the righteous mind uh, by Jonathan Haidt. Oh, uh, excellent. It's, which is a good book from what I can see. I've not finished it yet, but in terms of thought leaders and et cetera, that, that might have influenced me. Well, again, it's, it's, it's a tricky question because I, I don't have a, a really particularly good answer for that. But um, I, I do admit that some aspects of Joe Rogan have appealed to me recently. I think he's a very open-minded person that has a lot of uh, um, a, a, a wide range of guests from different backgrounds. And he, he sh I haven't delved too far into his videos, but he strikes me as someone who thinks a lot and, and I appreciate any any kind of cases of that today another example might be um R russell brand although you with a pinch of salt <laughs> <laughs> i am unfamiliar with russell brown who is who is russell brand. Brown? russell brand oh the, man. yeah uh, actor activist uh, character i mean i just, I, I think i just uh, i'm not saying i i necessarily align with these people in particular ways it's just i appreciate their way of thinking and talking and yeah. all sorts and i i think that they they are kind of to some extent what we're about uh, yeah. and, and their openness well I, I i will tell you just in the the little bit of joe rogan that i've seen i i, I remember one specific issue in one of his podcasts where he was presented with evidence that was counter to what his belief had been prior and he literally changed his view on air as oh, really? he was going around. He wow. said, yeah. you know, I used to think this, but it doesn't seem like that's right. And so I need to, yeah. you know, and he said he was going to investigate it more. But that, cool. that type of mindset, I think, is what I'm hearing you're, you're appreciating and, and kind of wanting to, to replicate and as it like influence to you. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and a security in yourself to, to not be ashamed of being wrong as well. Yeah. And to not see it as a defeat, which I think Joe Rogan, you know, he has that about him. He doesn't see these things as defeats. He sees them as uh, chances to learn and to lose a bit of ignorance. Yeah. So, uh, John yeah, it, is, is very much the same way. I mean, he, he acknowledged that when he started writing the book, he considered himself a very, very liberal guy. And that as he spent more time looking at how, uh, looking at the differences and the similarities between especially the way sort of right-leaning and left-leaning people uh, act and how they express themselves and, and, the, and the things that they hold dear, he started to move more uh, to the right uh, mm. as, as, he, as he continued to write the book. And it, it, was, it was the first time I'd read, um, that, that was an important book in, in, in my own journey, uh, Cal, because, because that was the first time that an author really introduced really academic and clinical uh, approaches to the way that we think uh, that wasn't all full of you know uh, passion and hyperbole and you know exaggeration it was really just very focused I, I, I think it's a I think uh, I'd recommend it to anybody yeah mm -hmm. yeah I'm looking well, forward to getting more into it mm -hmm. yeah I hope you enjoy it I hope yeah. <laughs> it's it's interesting how you're talking um, I've done some work on self-identity and self-schemas and various different things. And so the, the interesting part about that is that oftentimes we as humans, when we face, you know, that we have an identity about who we are, the beliefs that we hold, our values, you know, uh, all those viewpoints that we have, uh, and that forms this the picture in our head of who we are. And, and when we get disconfirming evidence right so I'm an active guy going out and you know I'm exercising you know I, I'm a big exercise uh, you know athlete but then I keep realizing yeah I come home from work and I sit on the couch every night and I'm you know that you know I'm not out running I'm not going to the gym I'm not doing that and there's you know oftentimes we either discount that information but put it aside somehow where we say 
all right, well, that's just, uh, it's just this last couple of weeks. I've been under too much stress or, yeah, it's been too cold out. You're making excuses for why you're not doing it. And it's really hard for people to face the fact that maybe I'm not as athletic as I think I am. And I might need to actually yeah. change my viewpoint on, my, on who I am. Hmm. Uh, and so I don't know if there was a question in there. But. Well, uh, what, what, I, what, what, what I wonder is what is it that gets people who, what gets people to be willing to change their view on something? Right. Yeah. Brexit or Donald Trump or um, guns or anything like that. Do you have any insights into what gets people to be willing to? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and, and to go back to that, that earlier point you were making about kind of ignoring things, I, I find that was very relevant to um, our, our Delta system, actually, mm. first of all, because it, it comes from a place It came from a conversation I had with another moderator who was, he was talking about this idea that we're very bad at remembering we were wrong about something. So we absorb, we absorb a view change and, and carry on as if we've always been right. Yes. And, yeah. and so the Delta exists to, to force us to acknowledge that change. Um, and the act of giving a Delta is kind of sticks in the mind a bit more. And also you get your own Delta history as well. So you can look back at the times where you were, wrong uh so so i just thought that was that was interesting and relevant but but what gets people to change their views well i mean that's the that's the huge question isn't it that's the, <laughs> that's, that's what it's all about i mean i think it, uh, it it depends on the person so whether you're you're appealing to their experiences and th their own biases you can actually maybe frame something in a way that they didn't realize was aligned with them mm. you can actually turn it back on them uh but but also I do believe there are people out there who will change their views uh, when presented with evidence. Those people do exist, I think. Um, in, in fact, it, that reminds me of I recently came across a, a quote that my granddad showed me, and it, I thought it was uh, very relevant. And it was the idea that um, one begins with a judgment and ends with a judgment. And the purpose of facts and figures is to come in between and make the one you end with more accurate. Oh. And, and this, yeah, so this oh. is an idea that I think is getting lost. I think people are getting stuck on their first judgment. Yes. And they're, not, they're not interested in, in, in acknowledging that that first judgment is just, you know, a kind of preliminary view on what's happening. You know, it, it's, not, it's not the final idea. Um, so that's not, uh, that's not coming through very well today, I don't think. Uh, but I do think those people exist. So credit to them. Uh, other people, I think they just need experiences. They just need to be thrown into an experience that changes their view. I mean, they just can't, uh, they can't help but acknowledge they were wrong. So maybe an example of that would be, you know, you hear about these ex-KKK members, et cetera. They've been kind of forced through, through their experiences of meeting certain people to just change their ways. You know, you might not have been able to talk them out of it on an online forum, perhaps. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I, honestly, I can't imagine uh, some of that. Well, and, and there was a, a, and I can't remember if it was Adam Grant or somebody else, but was just talking to your point about the judgment and then, you know, starting with the judgment and ending and the, the, the rule of facts and, image. you know, data to, to make that last judgment better. Uh, but they were saying too often we get stuck on our, the first idea that pops in our head, the first belief that we hold and because of the way that our mind works, we tend to try to make you know, that confirmation bias of, all right, so everything that comes in that, that now agrees with that, I, 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 I will take in versus, you know, the disconfirming evidence I, I kind of either ignore or discount in some way. And in reality, that first one is usually not the best by any means. And then the research has shown that when they're just given, you know, doing different things, I have to look that up and we can put it in the post. So. Much like, much like in, in brainstorming, I, I, I seem to be running into all sorts of, of um, things that are confirming uh, a, a new view uh, that I have on brainstorming. And that is more is better. That the, the first idea that you have is almost never going to be the best. Yeah. It just, it just can't. So why mm -hmm. would we think the same of our opinions? Yeah. yeah. You just come to an opinion quickly and easily. It, it's probably not the best articulate. It's probably not the best view that it can be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think another thing that perhaps we're forgetting is that 
we don't always need to have a view on things. Um, <laughs> That's yeah. a radical thought, Cal. <laughs> I, I, I do find myself sometimes like just, I, I like to make a habit of acknowledging when, you know, I don't have a view on this. I don't need to have a view on this because I, I think perhaps people, sometimes they just get too caught up in always needing to say something about something. So, yeah. um, you know, per perhaps you're not in a position to, to be the one that this is important to, or this is relevant to talk about with, you know, so of course there are global issues that everyone should have opinions on too. So, yeah. Um, I'd like to, uh, if, if it's okay with Kurt, I'd like to, to, to change a little bit because you're a musician and, uh, and this is the Behavioral Grooves podcast. Yeah. And so we, we, we do like to talk a little about, a bit about music. Tim likes to talk a lot about I, music. Okay. <laughs> but let's just get this right. I like music. I'm just you not, as, it's not the passion. I'm, maybe I should go out to, you know, change my view and, and put a question out there about how, how can I you know, work with my partner here who's so <laughs> passionate about this. I need to get more passionate, so. Yeah, Cal, tell me what, uh, what, what kind of recent music projects are you working on? Yeah, so uh, I've, I've got a, a kind of project slash band type thing. I mean, it's, it's, it is just me and a friend, really. And, um, and, and he, he doesn't like to perform so much, so it is a recording project at the moment, and, and it's called The Zenins. And basically, I, I've got my own home studio uh and and just recording it and i released an ep last summer oh. uh self-recorded and and i'm currently in in pre-production and and working towards another ep at the moment um it's just something i really like doing the recording process i find most of all i, I have played gigs and, and and a couple uh festival in the past and that is like a kind of separate experience to the experience of recording. So they're, they're like different things to me. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm really just in, in the in, in what way are they different? I mean, how does that, how would you describe that? Yeah. So I, I, the, the performing side of, of things, the playing to, to a crowd is, is, like a, is like a human kind of interaction type thing and you're getting lost in the music together kind of thing. Whereas recording, is like creating it's like fine tuning and, and and getting lost in that uh adding everything together and and i do recognize now that there are some parallels between my music recording and what changed my view was at the start i i do kind of i like projects i like getting stuck in and, and tweaking and trying to make things grow and work etc so i can see kind of the parallel there now yeah. um yeah, <laughs> yeah. That that is pretty great. Uh, and and what about writing? I mean, that's that's you know the the preamble to the recording and the performance. Yeah, I, and and when I said recording, I guess I, I was kind of throwing that all all together because I yeah I agree the the writing and is a huge hugely important part and and that that part of things I kind of tend to it comes in it comes in phases. It's it's kind of weird. I my writing tends to be. When, when perhaps I'm going through a tougher time and actually when things are going really well and smooth, I, I'm not as inspired, mm -hmm. yeah. um, which is funny and kind of frustrating. Uh, <laughs> well, but, you, you, you come from a, you know, a, a part of the world where there's a lot of poets that, that did really, really well focusing on their sorrows. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I'm, I'm trying to get back into that writing spirit just now. So, yeah. It, it, I mean, it's a challenge, right? It, it, it really is a challenge to, uh, to go from, from uh, an idea into something that is crafted and, and ready to record. Um, and uh, if, you, if you've got a home studio, I can imagine you're, you're, you're and as you said, you're tweaking along the way. So mm -hmm. the creative process doesn't end when you say, okay, I, the song is written. Now the recording process is an additional element of expression of what the song is. I think that's, that's very cool. Yeah, yeah. Right. I, you know, you can get a bit lost in it sometimes, and it can it can drive you a bit mad if you let it. But. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we like to uh, we like to ask our our guests what what their theme song is. What, uh, okay, yeah. So theme song. I guess this question I mean, you could confuse it for being favorite song sometimes, which isn't necessarily the same thing, is it? Yeah, that's so, very true, and I think right. there's a. a 
distinction that people make when we, we do this. So, <laughs> yeah. Yes. And, and if I was to, to answer the favorite song, I, I might say something like uh, Ooh La La by The Faces. Oh, okay. But yeah. in terms of theme song relevant to, to all of this, um, I, I would probably have to go for something a bit, uh, a bit obvious and, and say, what's so funny about Peace, Love and Understanding Well by <laughs> Elvis Costello. And the- <laughs> oh, that sounds great. Yes. Oh, one of my favorites. <laughs> yeah, that, well, and Elvis is tremendous. He's a great songwriter. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, fantastic. Cal, thank you. Um, we appreciate your time. We appreciate the work that you're doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it really does have an impact, I think, on what, half over half a million like yeah. subscribers? Is that yeah. uh, how you... 520,000 at the moment, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot. That's a lot, That's yes. A lot. So congratulations on that. And yes. uh, really, I think uh, you should be very proud and, and thankful. Uh, we're very thankful for having uh, you taking the time to be with us. So. Uh, absolutely. No, thank you for having me on. It's been very interesting. Well, good. Okay, so we'll uh, we'll end the recording there, and um, I just want to say thanks. This really, you know, just I I, I don't I have no idea what what your life is like on a daily basis. If you're if you're if, if you join your moderators, if you're in moderating all the time, or you know, if you're off doing other things and you've got a day job, I, you know, I I have no idea. But but it's kind of you to take time. Yeah, it's a, you know it's it's kind of nice to have these conversations and perhaps you don't know everything about you know the the nitty gritty background to everybody, but you know on this on the surface we seem to have a lot of common with with this podcast and your podcast and the subreddit. So yeah, yeah. How, how often do you do podcasts? I, you you said that you were set up because because you actually get involved in other podcasts. How often do you get interviewed? Uh, no, so the the change my view podcast is is just a little offshoot of the subreddit and we, we've oh. been trying to do a, a weekly episode where what we do is we take a, a notable post from the week and, and interview the the author of that post to see if their view has changed or not changed or, or whatever and um, unfortunately sometimes because I co-host it with uh, Michael Hatch another moderator who who lives in LA and and sometimes the the schedules don't line up, so we don't catch every week. But we're trying to trying to get it back to a weekly schedule at the moment. Yeah. Um, and no, so that's what I meant. Really, it's just oh. our own podcast. Um, but I've been I've done a few things, like I've done NPR, and um, recently Wired magazine reached out. So this thing comes in useful sometimes. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I can see that the Wired the Wired uh, piece that. Pretty cool. So yeah, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, just uh, for the sake of technical informa- information, how do you record your podcasts? And do, and do you do video as well? Yeah, we use um, just uh, YouTube live streaming through Google Hangout. Um, so we tried for a while to do to do a kind of polished, productional kind of uh, a month apart type thing to to really edit it, but we found that we got in, in, in the best kind of habit by just unedited straight to live streaming on YouTube. And it can be a bit rough around the edges sometimes, but wow. it, it allows us to just get it out. Quite yeah. Quick. Yeah. yeah. Have you found like, is the video component or people longing onto that? Uh, Cause that's the, we, we, we don't have vid, any video out there, but we've been, people have told us we need to do that and we should do it. So yeah. It, it, boring that. We're, Cause we're still quite, early days with the podcast it's I, I i can't provide too much help unfortunately because our our video side of things is is the more neglected side i think each video is only getting <laughs> you know, a few a few views to be honest it's it's our audio on soundcloud and all the all the uh, podcast platforms that are yeah. getting the listens really mm-hmm. um, so the, the video doesn't help us too much at the moment at the moment okay. yeah well i guess we're gonna we're gonna find out we're gonna try we're so there you yeah. go yeah all right. Well, Cal, well, we're, we actually do do the post and pre on the, on the video, the, the audio part at least. And so that we'll probably get that in the next week or two and yeah. get it posted out. And when we do, we'll let you know so you can sure. you know, share it. And yep. Say, Absolutely. Hey. Uh, yeah. And we appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks. No, thank you. Thanks. You have a good day, Cal. You too. Thank All you. Right. Take care. Bye.